Ik ben wel van haar zo. Oh my goodness. I still have my downs. I do have more brighter days. It can happen to any family to have an underage pregnant daughter. The baby just opens his mouth. If the baby wasn't here, I really don't know what I would be like right now. The baby's keeping me going, yeah. Courtney is 14 and six months pregnant. She lives in Inverness with her parents and brother Alex, who's 13. Well, I hadn't been feeling well for a few weeks and then my mum came through one day and asked if I thought I could be pregnant and I said, well, maybe. We did the test and it came up that I was pregnant. If I'm honest, it's not the, the path that yeah, I'm sure any parent would expect to be having their daughter go down at such a young age. Oh, that's lovely. That's a really nice colour on you. Do you like it? Yeah. I was really shocked. I couldn't believe it. Then we told my boyfriend, Danny. It was a shock at first. I know he was just really scared and he ended up being really excited and we both wanted to go ahead with it. Courtney and 16-year-old Danny were together for nine months when she found out she was pregnant. Me and Danny had been friends for, like, quite a, a lot of our childhood since I was wee. Me and Danny were with each other every day. We were really, like, close. Danny lived with his gran and granda. We were very close with Danny. He stayed here for a while. Um, Courtney and him had a really lovely relationship. And he lived with me quite some time, but obviously not in the same rooms and that. So we were all like one big family. When Courtney was seven weeks pregnant, Mum Sam collected her from a friend's house five miles away. Boyfriend Danny decided to get a lift home with some friends. Ten minutes, I think, later, we were on the road that they had taken. And as we got further out of town, a police car passed. And as we came round the corner, all the lights were flashing. Um, we were stopped and immediately Courtney just said, Mum, that could be their car. And the policewoman told us to pull over. Within half an hour, we knew that one of the, the males in the car had passed away. And then eventually we got told that um, it was Danny. <laughs> I had to tell Courtney, and I'll never forget. She just cried no and um, just dropped her knees on the grass. To have to go through something like that with your, your child is not knowing, as I knew at that point, that she was carrying their baby. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It really does bring home how precious life is, and baby's not the end of life, it's the beginning of a new one. And that's, I, I really believe baby's meant to be a wee miracle. <laughs> it's been a few months now and it has made me stronger. And um, I still have my downs. I do have more brighter days than I did. Knowing that Danny's not here, that's hard, but it's nice to know that I, there's a part of Danny living on. She's amazing. I'm very proud of her. It's getting closer now. I can't wait till the baby is here. I want to provide the best for my baby and be a good mum. In Portsmouth, 14-year-old Megan is four months pregnant. I was 13 years old when I found out I was pregnant. When I'd done the pregnancy test, I just burst out laughing. I've never regretted getting pregnant at all. Call your bed a minute. Yeah. We'll call your bed. <laughs> yeah, shush. Sure. Megan lives with her mum, Helen, and brother, Kyle, who's five. Yeah. You got milk? Ask mummy nicely then. So please. When she told me, I think I was in a bit of sort of shock. 13 is just too young. 
So it was my, you know, my little girl still, 13. How is she going to... Just her life, she's going to have no life. Megan was dating 15-year-old schoolboy Lucas on and off for nine months before she fell pregnant. I was 13 years old when we first had sex and he was 15 years old. First time was with contraception and then the other times after that, sometimes we used stuff and sometimes we didn't. I knew I was going to end up getting pregnant. Lucas is still at school and lives three miles away with his mum and four younger brothers and sisters. At first, she, like, told me, I think it was on the phone. I, like, didn't really believe her. It was, like, quite shocking at first and that. Luke said to me that I, I had only kept the baby to, to make him stay in my life, which isn't true. So it's, like, always been, like, on and off since she's, like, been pregnant. But, like, since she has been pregnant, like, every time we do argue, like, we do split up. Well, at the end of the day, Lucas is Megan's child's father, but whether he'll always be a part in her life, that remains to be seen. It's going to be the making or breaking of them two now. Oh. Megan's relationship with Lucas is frequently off and on. Get away. I'm really confused with my, about my relationship with Luke. I don't know what the hell goes on. That's why I just want everything to be sorted, but it never gets sorted. Mm. You're never bothered about you just, your child. No, I just don't show it. It's like not something that you'd like expect at this age, so like, it's hard to show your feelings for it. Well, I'll show a lot for it, and I'm younger than you. Two years. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I love my baby more than you could ever do. You say so. You put your friends first, thanks. Something which you it's obviously like born yet. something which you obviously like haven't done today. I want to be involved with the baby as much as like I can, and as much as like she wants me to be, without her like stressing her out or getting annoying or whatever. Lucas didn't turn up for Megan's first scan. Wow, right, it's got his big head, my fat belly, his skinny arms, and my chunky legs, and then his. Big feet. See, you don't bother. Yeah, I've got my 20 week scan on March the 15th, and I want him to be there because he didn't come to the first one, and I think it'd be nicer if he was there. Megan's rocky relationship is not the only problem. At 14 years old, Megan will have to wait two years before she's old enough to work or receive benefits. Um, and then once the baby's born, I have to claim child benefit for her on her behalf. Um, and I think that's probably only about £10 a week. Single mum Helen is already living on benefits and is worried that Megan doesn't understand the costs of bringing up a child. Yeah. Financially, um, basically, we're going to be um, bargain shopping and going to the car boots. I'm not. I don't know about you, but I'm not. I ain't going flipping car boots. How are you going to pay for your baby otherwise? <laughs> going to flipping somewhere decent, not flipping car boots. With what? Whatever I'll get. Well, you just said a tenner isn't much. So? So? Yeah, crappy second-hand stuff, thanks. Well, you used to wear it all. I might be having a boy, you donut. Megan thinks she's going to have the best of everything. I ain't a cheapskate. I ain't going to charity shops. Careful, watch it. <laughs> Megan is only in year nine at school, but she's not letting her pregnancy get in the way of her ambition. I work with gorillas. When I'm older, <laughs> but I want to do a hairdressing course at school. Because then, when I leave school, I'll be able to do it straight away. I can leave school next month because of the pregnancy, but I don't want to leave because I just don't want to be a sicko. Bye. Bye.
Back in Inverness, Courtney's no longer in school, but is planning to continue her education once her baby is born. I did go back after everything, and I find it too hard with everyone getting on with things. So I think I'm going to get like tutored out of the house, like homeschooled and things. Fortunately for Courtney, her parents run their own business and are able to provide for Courtney and her baby. Do you want to try the, the one over there? The Chanel one. That looks a really nice finish course. We're by no stretch of the imagination um, rolling in it, as they say, but we're, we're able to, to give Courtney not only emotional support, but financial support. And we're lucky that we can, like, you know, give Courtney that, that she can have her hair done, or sometimes I just had a wee treat in a girly day, and these things keep her spirits up and try and keep her focused on other things rather than, you know, looking looking at the past. Courtney is now 27 weeks pregnant and Mum Sam is treating her to a series of 3D private scans that cost £35 each. All set? We felt it would give Courtney more of a bonding, if you like, and just have more of a connection, if that makes sense, in the absence of Danny. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh. Oh. The baby just opened his mouth. Oh, look at the hand. Amazing. Just... Makes you feel really happy. I do feel like I'm getting to know the baby. The baby's looking really cute and just can't wait to meet the baby. That's an eye opener. Oh, wow. You can really see the eyelids. You can, you can, yeah. Since Danny died, Courtney has grown close to his sister Hayley, who's 19. No, we just kind of bonded. Quite, like I said, quite glad we have now. I call her my little yet taller sister. Oh, I'm so excited about being an auntie. God, it's going to be a spoilt baby. <laughs> I think she's just amazing. She's giving me something no one else can. So glad that I've got her in my life. Hayley is very supportive of me and she's just like a sister. She's good having Hayley. She's been through a lot, so I want to be here there for her too. That's the one. Yep. It's oh. gorgeous. I love this. Perfect. So cute. Mm -hmm. It's really spacious too. I wouldn't be able to see over the top of it if I'm pushing. <laughs> I know there's going to be days where she'll be thinking, oh, I wish Danny was here. I wish like you could have like that father-daughter bond, but she's going to be a brilliant mum. She's not like most 14-year-olds. She's got such a mature head on that shoulders. Before he died, 16-year-old Danny was a keen trials bike rider with a nationwide reputation for his talent. Courtney may only be 14, but she's determined to raise money to build a bike park in Danny's memory. This is the kind of place I want to build the trials park for all the boys to come down and do their trials bikes and things like that. Danny used to do, because there is nowhere really for them to go, and Danny always looked into stuff to do this, so it would be good. But before we start building the park, we need to do a big event to raise money. I really want this to happen, so I'm going to make sure something happens. Back in Portsmouth, it's the morning of Megan's 20-week scan, where she will find out the sex of her baby. Oh, I don't, I don't know what it is, but I don't care what it is. I like, I do care, but I don't mind what it is as long as it's healthy. I, I think I'd prefer a boy though. As Lucas didn't turn up for Megan's first scan, 
It's still uncertain whether he's going to show up this time. If Luke doesn't turn up, I think it will tell me that he doesn't want anything to do with the baby. He's finally arrived. Lucas, the man, has finally arrived. Megan and Lucas have already decided on names. Darcia for a girl and Alfie for a boy. Let's have a little look inside the brain. Oh, really big head. No, it's obviously it's... got your red. <laughs> oh, poor Lucas. It's always his fault, oh, isn't it? Oh, God. Now, that all looks nice and normal. Well, that's it. We're getting there a little bit, aren't we? Come oh, on, Wake you. him up. He's obviously a lazy bugger like Lucas. Are we going to have a little look between the legs, yes. aren't we? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. And you're having a little boy. Yeah. Yay! There we go. There you go. Are you happy now? I'm glad this boy. So I've got a baby boy called Alfie. <gasps> I thought it was fascinating because, like, how like they can do all that and like it's like confusing, but it's good. Well, you would find it fascinating. It's the only thing you do find fascinating with you not going to school. Hopefully we're good parents, but yeah, you can only do the best. best you can. But at least he agrees with me in some way. Just a few hours after the scan, Megan and Lucas slip into their old habits. I really don't like you at the moment. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah, at the moment. Exactly. So you said older. that before, and then it's always happened. No, it hasn't. Has. No, it hasn't. Has. Hasn't. Has. Hasn't. Has. Hasn't. 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 Has. Hasn't. Has. Hasn't. Has. Tap your it. Tap your it. Hasn't. Has. Hasn't. Hey. Okay. Okay. Megan's gone off Lucas again. Mum Helen wasn't keen on history repeating itself. I've had four children and, and, and no life, no. I've just had children. I had my first child at the age of 16. Basically, I've been, uh, I've been a single parent all my life. I don't want Megan to follow in my footsteps at all. I just didn't think she would have got pregnant because of seeing me struggle and how hard it's been. She always told me she didn't want any children, so, yeah, shocked. I want a boy and a girl. Yeah, but what if you had another child and they said it was a boy again? You can have it. <laughs> Don't no, think I so. won't really. What? Well, you're just going to have one? No, I'm still going to have two, but I won't really give it to you, dopey. So what if it was a boy again? Would you carry on till you have a girl? Yeah. Oh, my God. I might be one of them American women that ends up with eight kids or something. World record or something. Until I have one of each. If she carries on having more like I did myself, then I don't think she'll have much of a life. I'm hoping that her first labour will be horrific, so it'll put her off having any more in the future. In Scotland, Courtney's now eight months pregnant. It's great having these because you just can see the baby so clearly. It makes you want to meet the baby even more, <laughs> if that's possible. <laughs> I am about 30 weeks pregnant and, yeah, I feel the baby moving all the time. You think that's really relaxing, don't you? Now that it's getting bigger, it's, like, just hard and gets in the way. <laughs> more difficult to do a lot of things. Like, I can't put my own shoes on or bend down to get anything like that. Teddy, come on, boy. Come on in, boy. I'm really excited for the baby being here, but I am a bit nervous, but I am just trying to think positive about the birth. This has got to be done, so there's no way out of it. <laughs> and just take as many drugs as possible. Come on, boy. Despite being in the final stages of her pregnancy, 
Courtney's still determined to raise funds to build a memorial park for Danny. Hi, it's Courtney. I'm phoning about it to see if like, you could help me with something I want to do for Danny. Courtney's making plans for a large-scale charity event for next summer. I'm wanting to do like a fundraising thing, like for the bikes, trials bikes. I think this is a great experience for Courtney. She's so focused, she's, she's buzzing with it. Courtney is going to be really busy between the organising of the fundraising events and the imminent arrival of her baby. <laughs> OK, bye. Bye. Courtney has decided to combine her 15th birthday celebrations with the launch of the Danny McBain Memorial Fund. I'm looking forward to it. I'm a bit nervous, but I just hope everyone comes and I get a good turn out. I just hope this dress isn't too short. It's not, it's lovely. <laughs> For the first time since Danny passed away, Courtney is celebrating with all their friends. And within a few hours, Courtney raises £360 to kickstart the fund. It has shown me like everyone's wanting, like, came to help celebrate my birthday and the launch of Danny's charity. Donny would have loved this party, loved it. We just need to keep on, don't we? we need to keep going. Look after Courtney, keep her strong, all this butter behind her. Never mind, baby coming soon. Jelly bean, right. here we go. Courtney has put together a slideshow to celebrate Danny's life. She has pulled Danny's thing off absolutely fantastically, and I am so proud. I've seen a happier side in Courtney. She's got something other than baby to focus on. I'm happy she's happy. In Portsmouth, Megan is only eight weeks away from her delivery date. She's now feeling the strain and her attendance at school is suffering. Um, she's absent during to um, bad back pain um, in her pregnancy. Hopefully she'll return again tomorrow. Thank you, bye. And I hope I don't have a backache tomorrow because I want to go to school. It's worse than childbirth and labour. Well, I should hope so, anyway. I can hear him banging upstairs. I think it's Megan. I think it's her banging for orders. I want to go to the hospital, get my back chopped off. What's up, babe? I want to go to the hospital. What? I want to go to the hospital. Chop my back off. <laughs> Let me say, I thought he was going to say something serious then, like he was bleeding or something. Oh, shit, you're going to die. What, you're not going to die? It's only back out. We all get it in pregnancy. At least you might not get pregnant again, eh, babe, if you suffer a bit. <laughs> she's, a, she's a moaner. A little, every little twinge she's got a moan about, so... But I just laugh because it's just... It's just pregnancy. <laughs> A few days later, Megan's feeling better physically, but her relationship with Lucas has ended again. <laughs> we got, me and Lucas got back together on Friday, and then on Sunday he ended it because I called him a liar. <laughs> I don't really care if he ain't involved, like, anymore, because I can't really speak to him about anything. 
Well, it'd be great if they lived happily ever after, but I can't see that happening. So um, as long as they can stay f friends and be amicable, then that's cool. I don't know if I'll be a single mum. I think he will be there because he doesn't want the baby to be brought up the same way as he did because he's never known his dad for the last 16 years of his life. Megan doesn't know if her relationship with Lucas will last, but she's confident she'll cope with motherhood. Yeah, I think I'm ready to be a mum at 14. I have no idea why, I just do. Bring it on. That's what I say. In Inverness, Courtney went into labour three days after her due date and Mum Sam was her birthing partner. I didn't know what to expect in labour. I just, I had gas in the air. Before that I had dimorphine and I felt spaced out. <laughs> after 12 hours of labour, Courtney gave birth to a girl. I first saw words can't really describe. It was just amazing to have her. I called my baby Amelia Danny. Danny liked the name Amelia for a girl, and then Danny after Danny. <laughs> I want to be the best friend I can be. 